Good morning everyone and I was hoping to have some really nice weather today um, to give good lighting conditions to photograph the models and alas it's grey and overcast as normal at least it's not raining which makes a change so I promised to do a video on the Malagasy air defence setup and I thought I'd do one because it's coming up to April and it's budget time, it's time for a new strategic defence review. And this one is called A Design for Life. Can't think where I've heard that before. But anyway, let's have a quick look at how the Malagasy Air Force is structured. Now, first of all, the most important thing is that it's split into sectors. So we have the northern sector here and we have a forward air base in the Seychelles, which has got an Su-30 wing. We've got a forward airbase at the Comoros Islands, which has got a Gripen wing. And then coming into the eastern and southern sector, we've got a forward airbase, which as subscribers um, pointed out should be used, and it is under a defence agreement, on the Mauritius and Reunion Island, where there is a Gripen wing forward based and a Navy Maritime Patrol detachment. Then, Coming down, we have the Kukulan Islands, Kukulan Islands, um, which are again um, used by the Malagasy Armed Forces. They have a defence agreement with France and there is a Gripen detachment there. Now you see on these bases, this, these little R symbols and on Madagascar itself. Now it's important to say that the Madagascan oil field is located here and down here. So there's strategic interests here. Now, the western sector, as it comes under uh, the southern uh, Cape of Africa, is um, sparse of islands. So this island here in this airbase and these here are vital in protecting it. The main enemy identified is Marmatia, which is here where Tanzania is. And uh, Oilum is NATO uh, aligned. And that is, again, uh, full of oil and um, friendly with the Americans and that is a safe country. Now the R's signify the radars and these are the Thales S1850 radar. This is a 1 in 70 second radar from fleet scale. This is what's on top of the Type 45 destroyer. So the R's are the radar stations. Now this is a ballistic missile and air defence radar system. Um, the Malagasy's have got them on their ships and ground mounted. So on the Chasselles, there is a radar station. Comoros Island, radar station. And these R's here are the main radar points out here on Reunion radar station and crucially down on the Kogulan Isles. So it gives a good overlapping coverage of um, the Malagasy state. Um, I need to get this painted and on a tower job to do. Now all of these bases are protected by uh, good air defence systems. Uh, Patriots are forward deployed here, Reunion, Kogulan Islands, Seychelles, Comoros and around the radar stations and there's drone protection in these autonomous anti-drone systems here as well. Now let's have a look at the bigger picture. This isn't to scale and it's badly drawn. Uh, India is an ally Indonesia, um, trade route through to China. Up here past India, you've got a trade route uh, to uh, the Middle East, very important one. Got trade routes coming down here into the South Atlantic. This is the Southern Ocean. Uh, there's Australia, good eye, mate. Um, again, a friendly country and Antarctica. Um, so there is a vast expanse of ocean here that is really the stomping ground for the Malagasy Navy. It also goes into the South Atlantic. Uh, just to give you an idea of climate, as we get down to the Kogulan Islands, you're into sort of Falkland style tundra, Arctic tundra. Um, so a massive temperature range from the north to the south. But there we go. So let's have a look at the structure of the What If Malagasy Air Force. And we'll get on to the models in a minute. Uh, just to give you a quick um, view, the Malagasy Air Force has a HQ. Uh, the current general in charge is General Armchair the third. So he's in charge. And then he has underneath him, he has Fighter Command, Bomber Command, Intel Command, which does all the uh, aerial um, early warning stuff, 
transport command which lugs everything around and support command now everything that i have on this sheet uh, is available and i have built one in one in 70 second the malagasy's have just divested their c-17a's back to the u.s air force um probably to transport weapons around the world um, as part of the deal for the Mantellas. Uh, they weren't really using them and they plan to buy another uh, 27 A400. So the A400 is going to be the backbone there. There is the airbase uh, defence units, which come under support command. Support command does all the boring stuff like pay, medical um, development. Um, it does some of the interesting stuff like... Um, the secret stuff um, and basically everything that keeps everything running. Transport Command lugs the goods round. Uh, 36 A400Ms plus 27 that they want to get. 27 KC 135Rs, backbone of everything. 27 C1 C212s of all variants. 12 F27 still rattling around. 12 uh, Combat Search and Rescue uh, large helicopters, the MH 53EM. 12 HC-30J, which support the CSAR, and 12 small helicopters. Like I said, they've got rid of the C-17s because I'm never going to get one in one seventy second. Now, Intel Command is where the radars and everything sits, so this is what ties everything together. It's also where the SU-57s now sit and the roving Cyclops long-range high-altitude drone. Um, so... Um, the uh, idea behind Intel uh, Command is that it underpins everything and ties everything together. So it's got 12 G550 electronic countermeasures aircraft. I forgot Transport Command has also got six G550s. They do the CSAR stuff. Um, 12 C295 AEWCs. So those are the uh, equivalent of the AWACS. 18 MQ9 Reapers. The eight SU-57s, 12 electronic warfare uh, F-27s and those roving Cyclops. High altitude drones, drones where the wing is suspiciously like a camber wing. Wonder why. Uh, Bomber Command, everyone's favourite. Uh, 18 Vulcan B-3s, 18 Hustlers, 18 SU-34s. Now these are having problems getting spare parts because they are not supported by... Um, India, and that's a real problem. It will come on to that later. Super Angry Butterfly Drones. They've got hundreds of those. Those are new. And they've got some other drones. So that's Bomber Command. Now, Fighter Command. Everyone's glamorous uh, Fighter Command. 36 Mantellas. 36 SU-30 slash SU-35 UAVs. 54 FC-31s. 54 J-10s of various types. 72 Grippens. 18 Growler Eagles, those are brand new, I'm still building those. 36 F-16 CGMs and IMs, those are brand new, I'm building those. There's probably another 18 to come on order. 12 Seed Grippins, 36 Mirage 2000s, uh, Cs and Ds, those are heading towards retirement in the next five years. And 27 Close Air Support Hawks. Now let's look at the models. <laughs> So here we go. Here is Bomber Command, a special military operation onto the breakfast bar. Everyone's favourite at the back, the Vulcan B3. Here they are equipped with the AGM-158 missiles under the wings. They, of course, have capacious bomb bays to carry more of those missiles, six internally, or £2,000 bombs or £1,000 bombs. Um, a whole host of weapons that the RAF never got got on the Volcom and they reconfigured um, Bombay which allows greater flexibility. These two Vulcans uh, we got W the Walrus and Trixie are from the Sinister Skulls squadron. Then we have the Hustlers, uh, 18 Hustlers. Hustlers very good anti-shipping um, and long-range strike bomber, very fast at altitude. It's still a Mach 2 aircraft um, incredibly potent, but does need refueling from the 135s. They always fly with the small tank because they're not carrying nuclear bombs. Um, here we've got a Popeye missile at the back and two air-launched Tomahawks. Again, another what-if Malagasy weapon that they brought after the United States didn't want it. 
So the Hustler fleet is incredibly uh, versatile because it can do anti-shipping stuff. The Vulcans tend to be the standoff bombers and the Hustlers tend to be the uh, ones which are used for penetration uh, bombing. Incredibly fast aircraft, incredibly fast low down and high up. Like I said, still a Mach 2 aircraft. It does require a lot of maintenance, however. The Super Angry Butterflies, they're planning to have 600 of these. These are like the Shahid Gerin 2 drones. Um, these are revolutionising warfare and Bomber Command uses these and the Nat drones and the Barracuda drones to do various things. Uh, this Nat drone here is equipped for um, a decoy mission, so it's got cruise missile decoys, and this one here is equipped for um, short takeoff, and it's got small diameter bombs. So there's a range of things that they do with their drones. Now, the super angry butterflies are like the Shahids, but they are more capable because they have uh, what's called man in the loop or person in the loop targeting. Um, they also have a bigger warhead. So these are used uh, really uh, now, instead of big bombing raids, you use the super angry butterflies and then you use pinpoint strikes or long range strikes using the Vulcans. Now we'll come on to what was meant to replace the Hustler. And unfortunately, Putin decided to invade Ukraine after these were purchased. And that means that because these aren't operated by India, getting spare parts for them is extremely difficult, like the Su-37s. The Su-34 isn't having the best war in Ukraine. It's 26 have now been lost, which is quite phenomenal. So there are some doubts about its survivability. Now, these are upgraded by Israel. They carry standoff weapons. Here's the Malagasy Penguin, uh, lightning targeting system and the Lantern um, uh, forward-looking uh, radar and low-level infrared flying system. Popeye cruise missile then, PL-10 and PL-12 missile and another, um, not Popeye, sorry, these are Delilah, um, small cruise missiles for the suppression of enemy air defence. And there's the Penguin in the middle. Now, um, these uh, were meant to replace the Hustlers, but they are struggling with spare parts. They are well equipped for the standoff role and I use them to support the Hustlers and to support the Vulcans. Now, only 18 of them in service, unlikely to get any more. Um, and like I said, they are having to be used sparingly uh, due to that special military outing that's going on and causing chaos around the world. Right, let's go through. And as you can tell, the family are away. So I've got a collapsing time frame and all of this has to be tidied up by tonight. Here is Fighter Command. So Fighter Command, let's start off with the Mantellas. I've got three of these. 36 Mantellas planned, plus um, options to go up to 54. Of course, this is the export version of the F-22. Uh, these are conversions of Hobby Boss and Italeri F-22s. Then we've got the 54 FC-31 Strike Fighters. These are a really good aircraft. These are like the JSF to the uh, Malagasy Armed Forces. Now, the ones in grey are your suppression of enemy air defence and your stealth aircraft. Now, look, what the Malagasy's have realised is, looking at what's happening in Ukraine, is you actually need a mix of uh, what's called day one or week one aircraft. And then you need your aircraft, which will sustain a lengthy air campaign. So the grey ones uh, do the highest risk missions, um, give you overall air superiority with the Mantellas and the FC-31s, uh, carry out your strikes on the enemy air defence systems. So that's why you've got 12 seed Gripens here, a mix of two seat and single seat. Then you've got the seed F-16, uh, CJM and IM, which are brand new. I'm just finishing this off. Kinetic model here and um, Hasegawi here, and I've got some to be doing flying. And we've got the brand new Seed EF-15G Growlers, which are the jammers. Uh, 18 of those planned in total. And then we move on to the Air Dominance Fighters. So these sweep up behind the Mantellas. These deliver um, large volumes of beyond visual range missiles. They can do uh, within visual range as well. And these are also long range fighters. So they carry... Uh, suppression of enemy air defense KH-31 PD missiles too and a raft of BVR long range and short range weapons. So these are the SU-30 MK MADS. 
Now, if you notice, one of these is an SU-35 UAV. Now, they have to use the UAVs for some high-priority targeting, and this has got a Popeye uh, cruise missile and a long-range glide standoff GPS and laser-guided bomb. So, the SU-30 fleet is multi-role, but it tends to be used in the air dominance mission. But it can do both, and it tends to use the SU-35 UAVs one per squadron, so there's three or four in service dotted around um, uh, to, to give it some high threat environment capability. Now we move on to the aircraft which are designed to sustain and undertake a long campaign. They're still good fighters within their own right. 54 J-10 CD models. Now the D is actually a conversion of the Trumpeter. B model. Uh, this is equipped with a seed missile, standoff Israeli spice bomb, Python 4 Israeli missiles, Israeli avionics, and this is a two seater. Now, the reason it's a two seater is so that it can control a UAV J 10 to do high risk missions, uh, which is this one here. So, there is a lot of UAVs now being fielded as loyal wingmen. The rest of the J-10 fleet is C models, uh, manned um, or crewed, I should say. I use man in the term human, uh, not in the term of male or female. Um, and the J-10s, 54 of them, a uh, good uh, sort of middle ground aircraft. 36 Mirages remain in service. These are the land attack aircraft. They're only primarily used as strikers now. Um, again, a mix of Ds, two-seaters and Cs, pretty much equal numbers of Ds, and I'm doing an anti-shipping variant shortly. The bulk of the heavy lifting is done by the Gripen squadrons, of which there are 72 Gripens in service. Now, the Gripen is forward deployed to some of the smaller bases like the Kogulan Islands, Reunion Island, because it's uh, able to operate very well in austere conditions. Now, I've got a mix of squadrons here. I've got Strike Specific Squadron, which is the Charmander Squadron, and then the Pikachu Squadron, which is in the old scheme, which is a Flex Squadron capable of doing all missions. The Gripen can do air superiority, strike, anti-ship, reconnaissance, a close air support, whatever you need it to do. It's a very flexible aircraft. Um, not as good at carrying stuff as some of the bigger aircraft, but it is a uh, the backbone of the force. And last but not least, we've got 27 Hawk 129 close air support aircraft, which are there to support ground forces in contact. Um, they operate at ultra low level Ukraine war style. So that is a breadth of the combat aircraft. There are helicopters as well, but I've not brought those in. The army tends to operate the bulk of the helicopters. It's only combat search and rescue that the air force operates. So, like I said, we've got a real mix here from high-end air superiority and precision stealthy strike all the way through high-end suppression of enemy air defence systems down to close air support and the stuff that sustains a long aerial campaign. So, I hope that helps. Let me know if there's any thoughts. Like I said, I've got a few more builds to do. I'm running out of space. I need to start building the anti-ship uh, models, but there we go. That is pretty much a representative now of every Malagasy type in one in 70 second scale. Ooh. This doesn't even include the Reserve Air Force or the Navy. I'll do a separate video on those soon. Take care. Bye.